Hey there, beloved bunch of this channel. So glad to see you're interested in some cool, pretty old school concepts like barter and time banking communities where we trade stuff with no money in sight. Definitely. It's something different from our usual cash and credit cards, right? Let's dig into this fascinating world, shall we? Now, before the fancy printed money took over, humans were pretty good at playing the swap game. Something along the lines of, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. This was the barter system, my friends. It's significant because, well, it's where it all began in the economic history. Everyone traded goods and services directly without a middleman, let alone dollars. Then comes this amazing concept of time banking. It's quite simple, actually. Your time is your currency. For every hour you spend doing something for someone, you earn an hour that you can spend to get something done for you. Um, sort of pay it forward situation, turning time into a tradable resource. It's not really about the market value of services, but more about appreciating the time and effort put into it. Both barter and time banking revolve around the same central purpose, trading goods and services without having to use money. It's about establishing an ecosystem that thrives on mutual aid and fairness, where people directly participate in fulfilling each other's needs. It's like our very own die economic system. And the best part? It builds community spirit on a whole new level, instilling respect, mutual cooperation, and trust. In essence, these methods play on the old school thought of resourcefulness and community building. You might not have money, but you have your time, your skills, and the things you no longer need. So why not make them useful? I mean, who knew tidying up your neighbor's garage could get you, say, a home-cooked meal or a knitting lesson? And, well, our as quirky as they might seem, they were and still are an essential part of our collective socioeconomic fabric. They encourage us to think of the old ways and show how they can be integrated into our current economic models. Until next time, folks. Imagine back in the day you had loads of corn, but you were in dire need of a sturdy pair of shoes. If you were lucky, you might come across a guy who had tons of shoes, say, a shoemaker. But he happened to be craving corn. So you do a quick swap and voila, you'd both walk away happy. That was bartering in its most primeval form. As gobsmacking as it might seem today, our ancestors did this all the time. There's evidence that as far back as 6000 BC, tribes would exchange goods with each other, bonding and making agreements without a single penny changing hands. Imagine that, no stressing over the price tag or haggling for a discount, but our ancestors weren't just swapping corn for shoes. They also swapped skills and services. Need something heavy lifted? Trade you a loaf of bread for it. Bam! Another satisfied customer, all without dealing with pockets full of coins. Now, as time marched on, bartering evolved and kicked it up a notch. People started traveling, encountering tribes with different goods and skills to trade. This gave birth to a global network of bartering systems. You know, kind of like eBay, but with more camels and less dodgy secondhand goods. When you think about it, Bartering was actually a forerunner to our modern way of doing commerce, only instead of goods, we now trade in money. But get this bartering itself hasn't given up the ghost just yet. Nowadays, the idea of trading goods and services without money has reemerged as time banking. A brainchild of the early 80s, time banking came about when a smart cookie called Edgar Kahn came up with the idea of giving time a bit of um. In time banks, people swap their time and services rather than goods. So you could trade an hour of piano lessons for an hour of gardening, a nifty way to bring communities together, don't you think? Trading without money, just like our ancestors did, but with a modern twist. And there you go, a quick journey through the evolution of bartering, right through to time banking. Quite the trip, wasn't it? Imagine a time when money didn't exist. Hard to do, isn't it? But that's precisely how folks got by in prehistoric times they bartered. Trading a bag of grain for a shiny new spear. Now that's what I call a good business deal. Let's take a walk back in the period of 6000 BC when barter started taking shape in Egypt. There's also the Greek civilizations who started to switch it up around 900 BCE. They introduced the concept of retail trade, setting up a simple 
yet effective system of exchange and trade flourished. Time banking, on the other hand, is the cool cousin of barter. Instead of goods, you're exchanging hours, lend a hand to your neighbor for a couple of hours, and you'll have two hours of help at your disposal whenever you need it. The concept of time banking is actually not as ancient as barter. It was first brainstormed by a brilliant civil rights leader, Edgar Kahn. In the early 80s, Kahn looked at our societal issues and thought, this can't be it, there's gotta be a better way, and voila, la, time banking was born. He spread these ideas like wildfire, his philosophy extending all the way to Japan, where Teruko Mizushima picked up the torch in 1973. Over time, barter and time banking evolved with society. In the case of barter, the trade of physical goods slowly transformed into the use of representative money like I use in ancient times and then the paper and coin money we know today. Time banking, meanwhile, has been harnessed by modern technology with online platforms like TimeBank's USA, founded in 95, making it super easy to trade services without any haggling over their worth. So next time you bemoan the lack of cash in your wallet, remember that historically speaking, there are other ways to trade. Heck, you might just start a new trend for the next era of exchange. Picture this, folks. Way back before Starbucks and Bitcoin, there were the first barter communities. I mean, like really old school, think Indus Valley Civilization around 6000 BC. People scratching their heads thinking, how can I get that awesome looking pot without forking over my lamb? And voila, the barter system was born. No need for shiny coins or crinkly notes. Just trade something you've got for something you want. Simple, right? All right, now hop back on the time machine. We're fast forwarding to the 19th century. Imagine if you can pay for a haircut with, say, an hour of carpentry work or a homemade apple pie. That was the man, Dr. Edward Bancroft, introducing the time banking system. Instead of swapping pots and pans, people began swapping hours. It was all about everyone's time having equal value, no matter what service was offered. Solid concept, if you ask me. Nowadays, this ain't your grandpa's trading system. We've got modern communities evolving the game. We're not just swapping physical goods or services anymore. Oh, no, we're trading skills, spaces, lessons, heck, even cooking classes. In the digital era, time banking communities haven't lost touch with their roots. They've just gone online and global. They are bigger, better, and definitely more connected. Let's take time banks, Yusai, started in the 90s. As an example, it took the time banking to the next level from local trading to a network of international exchanges, not just limited to neighbors. Now you can trade gardening tips with someone across the Atlantic. It's the beauty of these barter and time banking communities, giving and taking, trading and exchanging. No money required. It's all about what you can do for each other. You talk about a trend that's totally rewriting the rules barter or time banking communities. It's like walking directly into a live action version of trading spaces where folks exchange goods and services without ever touching cat. People are buzzing about it across the globe and it's really fun to see folks get creative with their trades. Johnny's got an hour of gardening but he needs his bike fixing. Enter. In crunch times, like during crisis situations, these communities hum like well-oiled machines. Picture the scene, no cash on hand. Atoms are down, but you've got to eat, right? Barter to the rescue. Mrs. Miggins has eggs, but she needs someone to fix her flickering lights. It could be a win-win situation if you're handy with wirings. It's all about keeping the community churning and self-sustaining, whatever the weather. Now, let's delve into some real life bit. Have you heard about Time banks use a... It's a phenomenal example of a successful time banking community. They've got a system. See, for every hour you spend doing something for someone, you earn an hour to spend on having someone do something for you. And it's not just in the States, over in the UK, Spice Time Credits is doing the rounds too. They're encouraging folks to volunteer in the community, swapping time for experiences like museum visits or gym classes. Work to charm in places like Cardiff with folks getting involved in droves. That's the download on barter or time banking communities. All in all, it's a refresher on how together we can, don't you think? No money, no problem. In tough times or easy, these communities prove that the kindness of neighbors beats the size of your wallet. 
every time. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Jumping straight in, one of the biggest hiccups with barter or time banking communities is figuring out the ideal value of things. I mean, how do you decide what an hour of gardening work is worth in homemade bread? It's like trying to compare apples to oranges or, well, plants to pastries. Now, on to the less savory parts. Just like in any group, there are those who think they can game the system. And yes, there are risks and abuses in time banking communities. Someone might overstate the time it took them to complete a task or undervalue the goods they're offering up. It's definitely something to be mindful of. Critics don't hold back either. They've got their two cents to share. They argue that this model of exchange is inefficient compared to money. Mysteriously, everything seems a uh, tad more convenient with good old greenbacks in your pocket, doesn't it? Others say it's more of a case of out of sight, out of mind. The bad trades are easily forgotten, while the good ones make for great anecdote. Remember though, every dark cloud has a silver lining. Barter systems certainly add a little more human touch to trade, and while there might be hitches and glitches, they bring communities closer. That's pretty awesome, right? So that's the scoop on barter or time banking communities, folks. If you found this helpful or even just slightly entertaining, hit that thumbs up button, will ya? And don't forget to subscribe for more insights into different trading systems. Till the next time, keep your trades fair and square.